We are visiting the Netherlands as we dive in the Oosterschelde estuary and even taste some of the local oysters in today's episode on the Dive Saga channel. Today's dive is taking us to the southern Netherlands, where we'll be going for a cold early springtime dip in the Eastern Scheld River, also known by the locals as the Oosterschelde. And that's our amazing location for today's dive. Very, very popular among uh, Dutch and Belgian divers. Uh, supposedly really nice wildlife as well. And all of this used to be fresh water. It's a giant river estuary. But after the uh, great European flood of 1953, they dammed it and um, basically turned it into salt water so um, very very interesting uh, change of uh, of life that we can find here we can't dive this part of the world without discussing the unique backstory to how these waterways came to be if we take a look on the map of the netherlands we see the Skelder river estuaries This low-lying land has traditionally been a source of both housing and worry for the Dutch, especially in 1953 when what is now known as the North Sea Flood killed over 2,500 people, 187,000 animals and damaged over 47,000 buildings. Nearly 10% of all Dutch farmland flooded and this prompted the Dutch to take action. That's so ingrained in Dutch culture, the battle against the ocean. In fact, as much as one third of the Netherlands is actually situated below sea level. This tragedy resulted in one of the largest construction projects mankind has ever seen, as the Dutch decided to install 17,500 kilometers or nearly 11,000 miles of dams, storm barriers and floodgates. This massive undertaking, known as the Delta Works, consists of a series of dams and floodgates to control the flow of water in and out of the low-lying terrain. The flat landscape in this part of the Netherlands is very much characterized by dikes, bridges, dams and windmills. Today's dive takes place in part of the Eastern Skeld estuary. No real current, water temperature 10 degrees Celsius, that's 50 Fahrenheit. Um, but supposedly, according to other divers, the visibility isn't really good at all. But let's see what we can get. degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit still calls for a dry suit for me. So we set up our equipment and head over the dike to get in the water. It's early spring so there are other divers around. As mentioned, this is a very popular spot for divers in the region. However, it's highly advisable to dive with someone who knows the area well, because the currents are notorious and can be treacherous, and there is boat traffic overhead, so direct vertical access to the surface is not always a safe option. For added safety, dive guide Patrick and I are attached by a buddy line. I've clipped mine to a D-ring on my BCD, so I can still handle the camera. As soon as we descend, I immediately notice the rocky substrate covered in oysters. Dive guide Patrick had already mentioned he's a big fan of these particular oysters. Mm -hmm. 
The more we descend, the darker it gets. And as we reach 20 meters or 70 feet, it is almost completely dark. Unfortunately, the other divers were right. The visibility isn't the greatest. But that's part of the risks of diving in this area and luckily the current is very manageable. There are still plenty of crabs and sea stars to be seen, like this brittle star. In the dark, I even notice a large jellyfish. Loyal viewers, such as those of you who are subscribed to the Dive Saga channel, know how much I love jellyfish. It is not quite lobster season yet, but this lobster is already peeping out of its hiding hole. Unfortunately, it gets scared because of my video lights, which I definitely need down here in the dark. Every underwater photographer knows that this dark and with this poor visibility, getting good footage is a challenge. This is a great opportunity to practice my videography skills in challenging conditions. As we ascend to shallow water, I see dive guide Patrick plucking some oysters. It looks like he has quite the party planned for later. I must confess that I much prefer the shallow waters over the deeper parts of the dive site. The visibility is much better and of course there is more light. The current is slightly stronger than down below, but it's a sacrifice I'm happy to make. After another spectacular jellyfish appearance, our dive has come to an end. But not without a special treat from our dive guides. And one of the benefits of diving up oysters is that you can eat them. So Patrick, you're gonna open the... You know how... Yeah, I don't know how actually. That's really something that I never eat. I don't know if people at home eat that, but I find that <laughs> I find that disgusting. <laughs> but we're here, so disgusting. That's <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Oh, I keep eating. So yeah, oyster is apparently a delicacy. Yeah. Yeah. Ik zijn er zo te veel. Guys, thank you so much for watching and if you like content like this, remember subscribe to the Saga channel. I'll see you next time.